We're finally to the point where we are no longer writing code for creating, updating, and deleting data from the database. We get to do something a little fun, and that is authenticating a user and logging them in. Now, you might usually think of those two things as a single thing, but they are actually two processes. The authentication involves taking the username and the password and ensuring that that information is correct. And only after that information is correct, you log in the user. And that involves setting up the session for that user so that they can have access to the things that they need access to. Now, the first thing we need is a login form, and I went ahead and created one. I also created a layout page for not only the login form, but for everything else within this website other than the admin folder. Now, these two files are outside of the admin folder because if a user tries to access something inside of the admin folder and they don't have access to it, we're going to redirect them to the login page. Now, we could put login inside of admin, but if we are going to do some redirection, we could could end up with a redirection loop. And I want to avoid that. And by putting login outside of the admin folder, we have a better chance of avoiding that. So whenever we log in, we first of all want to authenticate the user information. So we are going to post back to this login page. So we're not going to have an HTTP handler here. So the first thing we need to do is to check to see if it is a post request. And we will do that with the is post property. And if it is, then we need to get the username and the password from the form. So let's create two variables, username, where we use the request object dot form, and then username for the field. Let's also get the password and we will retrieve that information in the same way. But then we want to authenticate the user. So we can do that either right here inside of this code, or we can add a method to our web user class so that we could do something like this. If web user dot authenticate, and then we could pass in the username and the password, then we could log them in. So we could call another method, webuser.login, and pass in username. Now there's the possibility of hitting the database two times, one for authenticating the user, the other for logging in the user. But we're going to go ahead and write these two methods independently. And if we decide that we want to make things a little bit more efficient, then we can come back and write an authenticate and login method or something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and write these methods. So let's open up our web user class and let's start with our authenticate. So public static, this needs to return a Boolean value and authenticate. We need the username and the password. And the first thing we want to do is check to see if we have a user. So var user equals account repository and we want to call the get method passing in the username. Now, if the user doesn't exist, so we will check to see if it is null, then we want to return false because we can't authenticate a user that does not exist. Otherwise, we need to verify the password and we can do that with our crypto class. So we need a using statement for system.web.helpers and then that verify hashed password method. We can pass in the hashed password, which we have thanks to our user class or our user object. So we can say user.password and then we need the plain text version, which is going to be supplied to this method. And this is a dynamic expression. So let's cast the password as a string just so that we can avoid that dynamic expression. We will simply return that. So if the user doesn't exist, then we definitely return false. But if it does, then we verify the password and then that will tell us if the user has been authenticated or not. So very simple. The next method is the login method, and we don't really need to return anything here. So let's call it login. And really all we need is the username because we will use that to retrieve the user from the database. So accounts repository dot get pass in the username. Now we could say that we are only going to call the login method only after authenticate authenticates if it returns true. So we could say that we don't need to check if user is equal to null, but I believe that there are some people, myself included, that would call the login method first and run into some issues. So uh, let's go ahead and check to see if the user is there. If it's not, then we will simply return. Otherwise, we will log that user in. 
by setting up the session. Now to do that, we need to get the session. So let's create a variable called session. And we can get the session with the HTTP context class. We use the dot current and then the session property. This is going to get the current session for whatever user is accessing our application. And the session is a set of key value pairs. So we basically say that, okay, we need to store the user ID, which we do. So we can store the user ID by setting session and then setting the key user ID and then user.id. Now let's go ahead and let's cast this as an int just so that we have some strongly typed data here. And we also need to cache the username. So let's do username equals to, once again, we will cast to a string and then user.username. Now we really don't need to store the password within the session. That's only for authentication. So let's see, there's the email, which could be useful. So let's go ahead and let's do session and then email and then we will cast that as a string and then user.email. Now we could break this out into its own method and we can call it setup user session or something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's extract a method. I'm right clicking on this code that I have selected. I'm going to refactor and extract method. And I'm going to call it setup session. This is going to pass in our user object and that is going to set up the session for us. The reason why I'm doing this is because I think it would be a good idea to have a method that returns Boolean that says, authenticate and log in so that we can provide the username and the password and we can essentially do these two things at once so first of all we want to grab the code from the authenticate method let's paste that in but instead of returning crypto.verified password let's store this in a variable called verified and then we can check to see if verified is false so if not verified then we will simply return false Otherwise, we will log in the user. And for that, we will call the setup session, passing in our user object, and then finally returning true. So this will give us the flexibility of being able to authenticate a user without logging them in, logging in a user separately, or authenticating and logging in at one time. So we can change this code to authenticate and log in. And if authentication passes, then we can response.redirect and go to slash admin. Otherwise, we will need to set a message to display within the form. So outside of this if statement, let's create var message and let's initialize it as an empty string. And if we don't redirect here, then we will set message equals to username and or password is incorrect. We don't want to give too much information. We don't want to say that the user doesn't exist or the password is incorrect because that's a step closer to someone you know, getting valid login credentials. And so inside of the form, we can add another div element and we can just say at message. And let's go ahead and add a class here. So class equals, for right now, let's just do error. And we can think that this text is going to be in red or bolded or something. Well, let's go back to our web user class and let's add some properties that will give us quick and easy access to our session values. And let's first start with a private property called session because we don't want to type HTTP context dot current dot session multiple times. It would be easier if we just had a private static and the return type will be session state or HTTP session state. We need a using statement for system.web.session state. And let's just call it session. And then we will simply return HTTP context dot current and then session. So we can use this new session property inside of our setup session method. So instead of creating this session variable, we can get rid of that and just change session to session and that will work. So let's do the user ID property. So public static int user ID. Now for the getter, and we shouldn't worry about a setter, the getter will be all that we will implement. Let's first of all get the value of the user ID. So let's just call this value, and we want to use session and then user ID. Now if a user ID has not been set, then our value 
will be null. So if we check to see if value is equal to null, then we want to return something that is definitely not an ID. So something like negative one ought to work. Otherwise, we want to return our value, but we do need to cast it as an int, and that should work for our user ID. For the username, we'll say take the same concept and apply it, just making a few modifications, like the return type is a string, the property name will be username, and we also want to get the username from the session. Now, as far as the return value, if we don't have a username, we could return null, but I think I want to return an empty string. That way we have an actual instance of a string instead of null. And if we try to use you know, a string method, we're not going to end up with an exception. Otherwise, we want to return the value, but we do need to cast it as a string. So we can take this and copy and paste it for the email, and then just change the name of the property to email. And then we want to get the value of the email from the session. And that's all that we need to do there. Now, it would also be nice to have a property to let us know if a user is currently logged in. So let's add a public static bool and let's call this is authenticated and it will have a getter. Now, if a user has been logged in, then they are going to have a user ID, a username and an email in the session. Otherwise, those values aren't going to be there. So we can look at any one of those values to determine if a user has been logged in. So we can use one of the string values and we can say that if not string is null or empty, and let's just do username, then the user has been logged in. Otherwise, they will not be logged in. And now that we have this property, we can properly protect our files inside of the admin folder. And we can do that inside of our layout page if we wanted to, but I want to use a page start file. That seems to be a better option in this case. That way we can change out layout pages and not have to worry about the check to see if a user has been authenticated or not. So let's choose a web page and it really doesn't matter. Any one of these will give us what we want. We'll just might have to add a code block here or there. And let's call this underscore page start. And then this file is going to execute every time a page is requested from inside of our admin folder. So we want a code block and we simply want to check if web user is authenticated, or rather we want to check if they are not authenticated, then we want to redirect them to the login page. So we can do response.write, not write, redirect, and we want to send them to login. And that's really all that we need to do. Later on, whenever we add roles, if we wanted to check for particular roles, then we could do that here. But I think for our system, we just want to ensure that a user has been logged in. And then based upon the roles, we will show them whether or not they can edit things or delete things and so on and so forth. So let's add a default.cshtml inside of admin just so that we have a default page. That will be kind of our landing page where we can say, welcome to your admin console. So let's add a new item. This is going to be a content page and let's just call it default. And we want to set the layout page to our layout page. So we will set that to tilde slash admin slash underscore admin layout.cshtml. And that should be good to go. So let's run our application and let's see if this code is going to work. So this is going to automatically load the default inside of admin. So this should redirect us to our login because we were not authenticated. So let's do admin. I think that's the name of the user. I'm, no, I think I did administrator and then the password is password. So we will try this and that was incorrect. So let's try admin and password and that worked. You can see that it logged us in and now we have access to our admin page, but we also need to provide the ability to log out. So let's add another file to the root of our application and this will be a content page and let's just call it log out. And to log out a user, we just have to clear out the session. And that's easy enough to do. We just need to call session and then clear. 
and that should clear all of our session values. So if we run this again, this is going to load the logout, which is fine. And let's try to go to admin slash post slash new, and that will redirect us to log on. And then we want to insert our information. We can then go to admin, but let's also go to post and then slash new. That's going to load fine. And then if we want to log out, we can go to log out. That should log us out. Let's try to go back to admin, just making sure that everything works as I think it does. And we are redirected to the login page. So our authentication is working very well. The only thing that we need to do now as far as user security is to add the roles and then check to see if a user is in a role for a particular function. And we can get started with that in the next lesson.